This is Base the Kid, the hardcore casual, in association with the Undefeated Podcast, proudly sponsored by Disturbing Sports London, and I'm joined by WBO Cruiserweight Champion, Chris Billum Smith, the gentleman, definitely looking like a gentleman today. How does it feel to finally um, have your fight date announced and be out with the ticket selling so well? Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, um, every fighter you can train away in the gym, but it gives you that added edge when, when the fight is, date is announced. You know the opponent, and you can start really um, sort of nailing down the tactics. So uh, yeah, it's a good good position back home in Bournemouth as well. Obviously, buzzing. Tickets are flying out. So uh, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. I know it's. Um it was done primarily to make sure that you could get the AFC Bournemouth fans in attendance. Obviously, they're travelling away the day before, but how does a Sunday fight day um, change your preparation or even change your mindset? Because I, I can assume it's, a, it's an extra day in the gym the week before. Does thing, do things feel a bit different? Uh, have you ever experienced it before? No, I've never done a Sunday fight as a pro. Uh, I've done Fridays and they always seem like it comes down really quick because usually you used to weighing in on a Friday. But when... Uh, but I'm excited because someone said to me, yeah, there'd be loads more fans at the weigh-in and I didn't really think of it like that. And uh, obviously, um, yeah, there'd be a lot more people because it's a Saturday, the people aren't at work. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited for it. And like you said, it gives me an extra day to prepare. Matthias Masternak. Now, obviously he's won the European Championship, um, hasn't had the chance at a world title thus far in his career, but he has had 52 fights. He's a lot more experienced than you. I think there's no one that's going to dispute that. But what do you think about this test is basically going to bring the best out of you uh, in this fight and you know how difficult of a fight do you really see it being yeah i see it being a massively difficult fight because he does everything really well um he, sh he has no real vulnerabilities so you can't just think oh, okay really target that area really you know really land that shot or anything like that where some fighters you can do that with um but he's um yeah really really well-rounded fighter but he lets you fight in terms of like he's he's not he's always moving his feet he's always trying to find his range so he's always dropping back in and out of range so you've got to be a real smart fighter to beat him um and you've you've, you've got to try and dominate him and um i think that's you know that'll be the plan to try and really dominate and step put the foot down early on but um but also be so wary at the same time and, and think of defense and be smart with the defense and making him miss so it's um yeah he's a a, a really well-rounded fighter is there anything specifically from him about his style obviously like you said he's very well-rounded but is there anything specifically that you will be um game planning for to say okay if he does this then i'm gonna make sure i counter it this way etc not really it's just being aware because he's always ready to throw punches so you can't go wading in with a big attack and then switch off after it um, so you've got to stay switched on because on the second phase he'll come at you uh, and he'll put his shots together he's not coming at you with one big massive hook or something like that he'll be like dropping back making you miss and then you know, setting up with a double jab and putting three, four, five, six shots together um, and you just can't let him do that because he's, he's a decent puncher he's a good puncher his 31 knockouts show that um, and he's um, a super tough guy as well now him being a super tough guy you're also a very super tough guy um as I think Andy Scott said up there, sometimes you might trade a bit too much on that toughness, but you've always been in good fights. You've never really had a boring fight that was attributed to yourself. So with that, I mean, a lot of people say, look, if you're in exciting fights, you'll always get other opportunities regardless of what happens. So how important is that to you to make sure that like, you do entertain the people that come out and pay the money? Yeah, I mean, important to me. They, they provide an unbelievable atmosphere. Um, you know my fans do and they get come and pay their money and just my style is exciting and I like I like being that fighter you know one who people want to watch fight uh, and Matez is he's the same you know he's he's an entertaining fighter so for me um, I kind of wish I was just a fan in this fight <laughs> it's it it's bound to go bound to you know be fireworks in there and, and be a a real pick and fight so um, yeah I mean I'm excited for that but um, you know it's uh it's not i'm not necessarily thinking to be entertaining but the, the way to win my fights the way i fight you know is an entertaining way so um it's just the, the way it rolls now with that being said obviously um a lot of people who do sort of have that where they will trade on their toughness sometimes it does end up becoming a downfall but 
is there like to you a fine line where you think to yourself okay look I want to entertain I want to be this kind of fighter but I have to also think about longevity where is the line for you and how, how close do you feel like you are to that at the minute yeah I mean what I do well is like uh, I take the sting out of a lot of shots and where my head is is because I fight in close a lot of people think sometimes I get hit more than I do um, my face you know my eyes weren't really bruised up my face wasn't bruised after the last fight I obviously had a head clash which opened the cut and then got opened even worse by by a punch but I didn't feel like I'd taken loads of shots same in um, the eyes at Chamberlain fight you know I caught a few shots here and there but I wasn't really marked up too much um, so I think and that was a 12 round 12 round high pace fight one that you know got voted fight, fight of the year you know uh, fight of the year nominee so I think it's it's not as bad as people think it's just you know I might get clocked with one or two here and there but um, I'm, I'm smarter than people give me credit for <laughs> Fair enough look last two for me um, with the obviously Isaac, uh, Lawrence Okoli sorry he had uh, enacted a rematch clause is that still in place or, or is that now sort of out of uh, out of the town yeah yeah I'm signing signing uh, you know signing this fight after signing to fight uh, Lawrence again so I'll be expecting that after this one and the very last one um, so the day this actually got announced um, I, w- I done an interview with Jaya Pattaya that exact same day and he took issue with the title Return of the King his exact words to me were ask him about me bro he knows who the real king of this division is do you have a comment and a response I think he's boxed most recently uh, and he's got the ring magazine belt so at the moment he is but uh, December the 11th it might be different Chris Smith, thank you very much for your time all the best